Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, trim a binary search tree. So we're given the root of a binary search tree and we're given two boundaries, a low boundary and a high boundary. Of course, the high boundary is gonna be a value that is greater than the low boundary or at the very least, they will both be equal. And we want to basically trim the binary tree so that all the values of the binary tree are within the range, low and high inclusive. And they mentioned that trimming the tree should not change the relative structure of the tree that will be remaining. And the reason this is the case and the reason this is even possible is because this is not just a binary tree, this is a binary search tree, if you recall what that means. For example, if we're given a root value like one, a binary search tree means that all values in the entire right subtree are gonna be greater than the root value and all values in the left subtree are gonna be less than the root value and this is a recursive definition. So the same thing applies to the right subtree if it had any right right children or left children. So when they say trim the binary search tree, they really do mean trim. We don't have to uh, remove nodes from the middle of the tree, right? For example, if you take this tree, uh, you know, if we had one more node here like this or something, right? We're not gonna be removing a node, you know, straight from the middle. We wouldn't remove this one unless of course we were removing this one and this one. So anytime we remove nodes, they're gonna be connected to leaf nodes and then uh, you know they're gonna be contiguous, right? So technically, yeah, we can remove a middle node, but that middle node is gonna be connected to additional leaf nodes that we are also gonna be removing. So the main thing with this problem, if you can understand how you know recursive trees work, this is gonna be another binary search tree recursive algorithm. So it's not too different from uh, binary tree questions, but there's just a few edge cases that we're gonna have to handle. So let's start with just this example. In this case, this is the tree we're given. The low and high is one and two. So all values have to be within one and two. Now, without even trying to be clever, let's just start you know, traversing the tree. Let's just start at the root node and just see what we can do. Right, we don't have to know exactly what the algorithm is quite yet. We just have to kind of go through an example and see what happens. So we look at the root node, the value is one. That is within our range one and two, so that's perfectly fine, right? This node does not have to be deleted, but what about the left subtree and what about the right subtree? Well, we have to traverse those to figure stuff out. You know, and then we get to the left node, right? It's a zero, which makes sense because it has to be less than the root value because that's the left uh, subtree. So of course, since this is not within the range that we want, we are not gonna be including this node, right? It's too small, right? It's, too, it's smaller than our low boundary, so we're not including it. And in this case, this node does not have any left children, but if it did have left children, we definitely would not wanna include those left children either because they are also gonna be less than zero, which means they're also gonna be less than our low boundary, which is one. But it's possible uh, that, you know, technically it could have some right children that are greater than this value, uh, which might actually be valid. They might be within our range. Now, in this case, we know that's not possible because the root was one. So anything that goes in this subtree has to be less than one. Uh, and there's nothing that's less than one and greater than zero. So it's not possible, but I'm just kind of illustrating the general idea to you, right? Like we're already kind of learning a lot just by going through this example. Now, so we, we know that we're not gonna return anything from this left subtree because zero does not fall within the range, but we didn't end up going through the right subtree. We know that all values in the right subtree are gonna be greater than one. One is valid in terms of our range that we're given. We still have to verify the right subtree because you know this is a two, which we know is perfectly valid because our high boundary is also two, but it could have been a five. It could have been a six, right? It could have been too large. So we do have to verify the right subtree. In this case, we see, okay, two is valid. It doesn't have a left child and it doesn't have a right child. So uh, we don't have to delete this, right? So these are the remaining two nodes, which means this is the tree we're gonna return. So that's the correct solution. Now let's go through a slightly more complicated example. I think just by going through this example, we already kind of understand, you know, what's gonna happen if nodes are out of bounds, but what's gonna happen if the root node is out of bounds? You know, then what are we gonna do? I think that's kind of the main edge case in this problem. Let's kind of understand that. 
Okay, so now let's look at a slightly more interesting tree. So you can see that this is also a binary search tree. You know, three is the root. Everything in the right subtree is greater than three. Everything in the left subtree is less than three. In the recursive tree over here, the right subtree is larger than the, the value one. So this is definitely a binary search tree. We're given the boundaries uh, low is one, high is two. So we want to delete everything that does not fit within these uh, boundaries. So I think we've gotten to a point where we realize that recursively traversing the tree is going to be helpful for us. We can do it, you know, a depth first search type of way. But the conditions that we traverse are going to depend on what the, what kind of values we end up seeing, right? So first value we see is out of bounds, right? How do we know it's out of bounds? Is it less than the low boundary? No. Is it greater than the high boundary? Yes. Three is larger than the high boundary. What does that tell us? That tells us that this node is too big, so it's not going to be included in the result. But that also tells us that everything in the right subtree is also too big, and therefore it cannot be included in the tree. So like I said, even though we are removing the root node, that root node is connected to a leaf value that is also being deleted. So that's why you know this kind of counts as trimming the tree. Okay, but so how is that going to affect our DFS? We're deleting this and we're deleting this. Well, what we know now is the easiest way to do it is just to return the left subtree as the result, but let's not forget to run our algorithm on the left subtree as well, right? Because we don't even have to look at the right subtree. We don't have to look at the root ever again, but we do have to run our trimming algorithm on the left subtree and then returning the result from that. Now, of course, we could have had the opposite case. The root value was too small, right? It was smaller than our low boundary. In that case, we would have done the opposite. We would have deleted, we would have, uh, deleted everything here and we would have returned the result after running trim on this subtree. So I hope you kind of get the idea of the recursive nature of this algorithm. Okay, so now let's continue recursively trim on this. So this is our new root node. This is one. Is it smaller than our low? Nope. Is it greater than our high value? Also, no. Okay, so now what are we going to do? We know that this node is not going to be deleted. This is going to be our root node that we're going to return, but we don't know about its left and right subtree. What we're going to do now is run trim on the left subtree and then take the result of that and assign it to the left subtree of this node. But of course, we know that nothing is here, so it's the base case. It's null. We can't trim a null tree, so null is just going to be assigned back to the left child of this node, and that's what it originally was was anyway, so we didn't make any changes here. Now, what about the right subtree? It could be that we need to trim some of this right subtree, so let's run our trim algorithm here. Okay, let's take a look at the, the node, the root node of this subtree. It's two. Is it greater than high? Nope. Is it less than low? Nope. So this node is also going to stay the same. We're not going to delete it, but let's take a look at its children as well. We know that they're both null, so we don't have to do anything with either of them. They will stay the same. Then we can return this tree up to its parent. So the parent is going to say, this is my right, this is my new right child, which is what it originally was anyway. But, you know, it could have been that, you know, suppose that the value of this node wasn't two, it was actually, you know, three or something. In that case, we would have deleted this node and what we would have returned to its parent was null. And this entire tree is going to be the result after we run trim. Basically, we only deleted these two nodes. Since we are uh, recursively running this algorithm and potentially in the worst case, we'll have to visit every single node in the tree. The overall time complexity is big O of N where N is the number of nodes in the tree. And that's also gonna be roughly the memory complexity. Technically, the memory complexity is gonna be uh, big O of H where H is the height of the tree because that's what the recursive call stack of our recursive function is gonna be in the worst case. We know worst case H could end up being N. Uh, you know, if the tree was just kind of like a linked list, you know, something like this. But that's the time complexity. I hope this makes sense. Now we can jump into the code. So even though we went through a lot of stuff there, 
the solution to this problem, at least coding it up, is pretty simple. We know it's recursive, and we know that the first base case is very simple. If the uh, root node is null, then we are going to return null. So we can do that just like this. And then we know if it's if it's non-null, then we have to actually take a look at what value is the root node. And is it possibly greater than the high boundary that we're given? Or possibly is it less than the low boundary that we're given? Both of these cases are going to be handled slightly differently as I showed in the drawing explanation. If it's too big, then we're going to run uh, the trim function recursively on the left subtree because we know that if the root value is too big, everything in the right subtree of the root value is also going to be too big. So all we have to do is run trim on the left subtree of the root, passing in the same boundaries, right? The low and high boundary are not going to change. Uh, but yes, we're going to call this recursive function. And that's what we're going to return as the result. So that's one case. Now, the opposite case is going to be handled the exact oppositely. Uh, so, which makes sense, so we can just copy and paste this. If it's too small, then everything in the left subtree is also going to be too small. So we want to run the trim function on the right subtree and then return the result of that. Now, if neither of these are the case, that means the root value is actually going to be included in the result. So we don't delete the root uh, value, but we potentially have to update the left subtree and the right subtree of the tree. So we have to run trim on the left subtree and then assign the result of that back to the root dot left because maybe we'll end up deleting the entire left subtree or some of the nodes who knows so we're going to run trim on the left subtree pass in the exact same uh, boundaries high and low and so that's for the left subtree and we can actually just copy and paste this and do the exact same thing for the right subtree as well and once all of that is done we can go ahead and return the root node and now let's just run the code and make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left side, yes, it works. And it's about as efficient as we can get it. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel. And hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.